Welcome back to the fifth installment of the CODASIP blog series discussing all things RISC V. Hi, my name is Steve Winandi, and with me is Philip Benna, Product Marketing Engineer at CODASIP. In our first installment, we took a high level look at CODASIP's RISC V processor portfolio. In the second video, we went into a bit more detail on processor performance and what you need to consider when picking your processor. The third video covered the complexities involved with processor selection and design. In the fourth video, we discussed the use of an operating system. And in this chapter, we will be discussing the new application cores available from CODASIP and how you can use them effectively. Philip, I see CODASIP has announced new application cores. Can you tell us more about them? Hello, everyone. My pleasure, Steve. There have been a number of new developments with the CODASIP RISC-V processor portfolio. To start with, we have recently updated all of our IP with a new naming convention that is more in line with how the industry references processor IP. If you will reference the chart on the right, we have restructured our portfolio to include RISC-V microprocessors targeted for low-power embedded applications, high-performance embedded applications, and application-level processors capable of running an operating system. In addition, we have changed the BK naming nomenclature to L for low power, H for high performance, and A for application-level processors. Secondly, we have done a lot of development in the application processor area. We have started with the application processor microarchitecture called BK7, which is now the 7 series. Currently, we have a whole bunch of products based on this microarchitecture. We should definitely not forget that with the application processor domain, we have announced RISC-V multi-core options to the market. We will talk about this in more detail later in the video. All of these cores are RISC-V compliant and utilize industry standard interfaces such as AMBA Interconnect and JTAG Debug. They are all pre-verified by CODASIP and ready to be used in production silicon. Users can therefore spend their time verifying their system design and not the individual processor IP core. That adds a lot of clarity to the portfolio. Are the new 7 series cores able to run an operating system? All of the application processors are designed to be able to run embedded Linux operating system. We have talked about the hardware requirements for various operating systems in the previous video blog. The reason why our customers want to run Linux on the processor typically is that their application requires advanced user interface, communicates through number of input or output interfaces, or needs to run a couple of software threads concurrently. This is very typical for networking devices such as routers or modems. We would also find high demand for well-designed user interface in many consumer electronic devices like set-top boxes or even variables. These are all good use cases for Linux-capable application processors. Philip, we discussed the operating system hardware requirements in the last blog. Can you just quickly remind us what exactly we are talking about in this case? Sure. The 7 series cores from CODASIP are currently the processors with the most complex microarchitecture in the portfolio. There are 64-bit processors with 7-stage pipeline to allow for high frequencies and with features like dynamic branch prediction for the maximal performance. Additionally, these processors come with all the features necessary to run Linux operating system, such as the memory management unit, advanced privilege modes, or atomic instructions. We have already released a first core from this series in November. This processor is called A70X. We also recognize, though, that some customers are additionally seeking enhanced DSP performance and multiprocessing solutions. This is why we recently announced three additional application processor cores, which will be released in the new year. The A70X is the starting point for our application processor offering, which will grow over the coming years. Multi-core, this is exciting. Can you tell us more? Let me first briefly tell you something about the new DSP-optimized solutions. 
The 7 series will be the first series in Codacy Brisk 5 processors portfolio to contain processor cores capable of executing single instruction multiple data operations with single cycle latency. Such operations are typically used to accelerate algorithms for audio encoding or decoding, sensor fusion, computer vision, and other digital signal processing. In Codacy Brisk 5 processors, the SIMD operations will be enabled through standard RISC-V-P extension, which stands for PACT SIMD. The first processor to implement the P extension in our portfolio will be A70XP. Now let's get to the multiprocessing. Our solution supports clusters with up to four processors in symmetric multiprocessor configuration. The system will come with configurable L1 and L2 caches and standard interfaces. The standard RISC-V interrupt controllers will also be supported. Based on required SIMD support, two solutions will be available, the A70XMP and the A70XPMP. The new additions will be available in the first quarter of 2021. If you want to know more details, check also the press release on our website. These are really big additions to the portfolio. Thank you for sharing. Codasip has really expanded its offering over the past two months. How do I get started with one of your new cores? We definitely encourage you to evaluate our solution for yourself. To get started with the evaluation, please contact us at our website or send us an email. The company representative will help you obtain the information you're looking for. The website is also a good source of additional information about our products. Thank you again, Philip, for taking the time to talk with us. This concludes our session on the application cores offered by Codacip. Please join us for the next post in the series where we look at performance, meaning PPA numbers, and how to make sense of them. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to seeing you next time.